In this video, I want to show you how I've been creating the caustic water lighting effects that I've done in both Monster Fish and this latest production, Giant Bear. It's a very powerful tool. It ha really helps the immersion of these underwater scenes and creates a lot of mood and interesting lighting dynamics that you couldn't get any other way. And it's actually pretty easy to do. So this will be a pretty quick one. And I'm just going to show you how I go through it and break it down a little bit. And hopefully you can experiment and do all kinds of crazy things with it. Okay, so the next thing I want to demonstrate here is using what's called a gobo. And a gobo is something that you put in front of a light to cast shadows, change the color of the light, or create imagery on, on a background. So um, an example of this is these underwater scenes, which we discovered, I kind of discovered the process while doing um, monster fish. Um, I've used it before to create the leaves and stuff being cast on shadows of leaves being cast on characters, but it's really good for creating caustics underwater. So um, if you look at these, this object, these many, many layers, uh, let's just take a look at the camera, the actual camera view. It's right here. It'll take a second. Um, using a gobo can be a little bit intensive for the render. If I turn this off, what you'll see is the light is pretty overwhelming and just fills the whole scene really equally. Let's go back to this custom view here and you can see the overall look of the scene. So this is just with flat lighting. Um, gobos work best with spotlights. So I just want to show you when I turn the gobos on, you can see it's creating all this dappled shadows and variance in lighting density all over the place. So this is this gives us that feeling of water. And I want to show you where this is actually coming from. So let's pull back. This is coming from two layers that are actually animated noise layers. And they're black and white. And they're translucency. So this is one of the caustic layers here. So let's just put it here and just have a look at what it is. It's uh, material options. The light transmissions are on at 100%, okay? So if they weren't, if the light transmission was not at 100%, what we would get is we would just get a shadow. Uh, so let's just go here and we'll put light transmission to zero and we'll just get one big solid shadow over top of everything. We put light transmission to 100, you're going to get the effect of the gobo. Um, the cool thing about this is if we go into this composition here, you can see that it's actually animated. So we'll just play it back. And I'm using an animated noise property um, to actually drive this. So let's just have a look what it's doing. I'll go into the effects here just so you can have a look at it. I don't want to get too much into creating these effects, but I'll show you what it's doing. It has a fractal noise on it. And that's it. Uh, essentially, it's a smeary fractal noise. Just take a look at these settings if you're curious about it. I've just got a time um, variable on here. So let's just, we'll just press U to bring up the uh, animated properties. So, oh, sorry, there's a time times 50. So just the evolution. So the evolution is actually being pulled along by this expression, which you could do manually. You could keyframe it manually. But this is how you can change your speed of, of everything moving. Now, the a few of the variables to consider are how the density of the noise. So you can change this. I mean, you can make your scale quite large, and that will actually change the nature of the shadow. So let's go back here. Uh, not this one, sorry. This one here, and we'll have a look at what happens to this shadow. And you'll see that the shapes just got a lot bigger. So actually what I'll do is I'll lock this composition so we can stay in this view. And uh, we'll bump over as soon as this finishes. Okay, and so I'll put the scale back to like... 25 and you're going to see what happens to that light see the shadows have just got a lot more dappled and spotted looking which suited the scene better this might change it really it's really down it comes to down to taste but this creates a really nice a really nice effect uh, so if we just have a look at the scene i'll render like i'll render a handful of frames see if i can render this out without it taking too long i work usually with these lights off um, that's the thing about using lighting is that lighting will sort of it will dictate what your layers look like so you can't paint a ton of lighting into the layers if you want to use lights uh, the lights are going to change the color they're going to change a bit of the depth of everything so there's a bit of a flatness you have to paint for and i tend to paint if i'm painting background pieces i i paint more considering like the ambient occlusion layer, like the darkness and cracks. And if the, it's sort of like, I almost light things as though it's a cloudy gray day. 
and there's sort of a general lighting, like it's coming from the top or it's coming from the side. There's kind of, I just consider that. And then I allow my, my other lighting to sort of fill things up. And um, anyway, so we'll just have a look at what this does. Okay, so as you can see, uh, this is the effect of the actual caustic light effect on the scene, which I, I think is actually, it's quite convincing and it, it actually looks really good. It adds quite a bit of life to the scene and that's barring some of the, you know, excluding the movement of the seaweed and everything else, you're getting a lot of life and dynamics in the scene and you can see in the finished first draft of this render that it's actually working pretty well. Uh, one other thing, actually, before we get out of this scene is I just want to show you where my lights are. Okay, so for this, I just want to show you really quick the two lights that I have in the scene. I've just shut them all off. There's there's a bunch of fog I have put in the scene uh, just to create the water depth, and that's just a whole bunch of paper texture layers. But I want to show you what's going on here really quickly. I'll pull back. Okay. So essentially, for the main scene is I have two spotlights. I have a right and a left, and that's just to fill stage left, stage right. And those spotlights are slightly different colors. Um, and they're casting, as we, get, as we get further to the right, it's getting bluer, and this one's a little bit whiter. And these spotlights are shooting directly onto these boards, these caustic boards. And the way to position a caustic board, if you're going to use them, is I find the best way is to parent it to the light you want to put it onto and then just zero out its position and zero out its rotation. And that way, so let's just let's just unparent this one here. If we turn off its parenting, you can see its orientation is all messed up. So if you were to bring it in, in a composition, let's just put it at zero, 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 and put its position to zero, zero, zero. It's actually probably would be like uh, 960 by 540, so it would be in the center of the scene. So let's say you just created that and brought it in, and it's not positioned anywhere near your ca your lights the way you want it to be. Uh, what you can do is, as soon as you parent it to the light, so we're parenting it to the right light, uh, I can just zero out its position. I don't know why my lights aren't showing up right at the moment. Um, I've zeroed out its position, so you can see, let's just go into adaptive. Uh, maybe let's share our wireframe. I don't know why, I'm having a lot of trouble lately with the way that After Effects is previewing my scenes since they updated. Um, a lot of my RAM renders and a lot of my pre scene previews are really staggered and not always working. Okay, so you can see the light right there. So we've actually taken this caustic layer. Let's go back to adaptive. And it is now positioned right directly on the light itself. So as I pull it forward, we will start. To, we will begin to see it. There you go starting to show up. So I'm pulling it off and away from the light, from the light itself to get it so that it's filling the frame the way I want it to. And this this means it's like it's like directly aligned up with the center of the light. So there we go. It's like I wanted it at about 125,000 since I've done this before. There you go. And then what I want to do is I can zero out its rotation because right now it's just the angle of the actual light. It's This will now match the spotlight. So it's now parented to the light. So no matter how I, I position the actual light itself and what the light is looking at, that gobo object will, will follow it around. You see my values are pretty huge because this thing is quite far away. Um, but I can also, if I change the orientation of the light, you'll see it'll just sort of follow along. And that's what we want to do with that. So I really don't have that many lights in this scene. The only other light I have is I have a backlight and I have an ambient light just to sort of fill it up. So let's just take a look in the camera what it looks like with the, just, just the two, the stage left and stage right. Stage left and right are sort of the general lighting for the scene. And then I have a backlight. And the backlight is, that is actually more for the, the moss and the seaweed. I have trans, uh, translucency on them or light transmission settings. So they, they kind of cast, it, the backlighting makes them glow a little bit. Uh, and then I have an ambient light, and that's just a general light to fill the scene up just to, so I can control the blue brightness of it. So if you take a look, it's very blue. It's at 30%. It's not that bright, and it just kind of casts a general blue hue over everything. But the one, the two lights doing most of the heavy lifting are the right and left light. Cool. So once again, here's the finished shot. Well, I wouldn't say this one's 100% finished. I still have a lot of work to do on it, the color and the lighting and everything like that. But I'd say it's the basic idea has come together. I hope this concept has given you some ideas of what you might be able to do yourself. Um, once again, to all of our subscribers, thanks. Thanks for following us for so many years, and thanks for your continued support.